So here we are getting started with Cam Schnapper. Uh, so I've got the video set up with my projector plugged into my second screen and I'm currently in my 3D modeling software looking at the setup of my stage. So I have a cube that's projected onto a back wall and for now we're going to focus specifically on the 3D cube and mapping onto it correctly. So as you can see from the video hopefully, uh, let me adjust the camera slightly. We have a cube that's sitting at about 30 degrees by 45 by 45. So the point of the cube is sitting straight forward and I've tried to represent that as best I can in the 3D model here. The important aspect of the model, uh, hopefully you couldn't see that, <laughs> uh, the important af aspect of the model is how the UV mappings are working. So before I export from my 3D model of choice, uh, my 3D modeler of choice, I'm going to I'm going to select the shape I want, uh, edit its properties, and in 3ds Max, I'm going to unwrap its UVs. So in the editor, I want to select it, and instead of um, uh, this is unfolded, I want to flatten it so that it creates this. It uses the maximum possible it can of our texture coordinates or our UV map as it can. Now in here you can go to the detail of rendering and rendering as a texture if you want to do the complex task but due to the, the style of model it is and the, the accuracy of cam snapper I would actually normally just use something like the snipping tool. Create a new snippet of this. Open Photoshop. If we wait for this to load. Open Photoshop. I am going to make a new, uh, create new that is, I want a custom resolution of 1024 by 1024. I'm going to create it. And now I have a perfect square. Paste my snipping into that. And then we are going to put this in the middle. And then scale it up until it fits. So because I snipped it, it might not be perfect. But I'm going to take it so that the edge of the thicker grey bar is touching the edge of our perfect square inside Photoshop. Okay, so it's slightly messy, but we have just upscaled our UVs so that they are a 1024 by 1024 texture. We want to sample out more data from this, so I am going to use my rules to snap to the side of the green that symbolizes each face of the cube. Uh, let's zoom in on this so we get this accurate. So it's dead in the middle of the two of those. And right up to the edge of that. Same on the other side, just make sure we're flat. And now I'm going to use the marquee tool to select this cube inside Touch Designer. And I use the rules because it snaps to the grid correctly for us. So now I have a shape. If I do edit stroke, fill it with black on the inside, actually I'm going to cancel that and fill it white first. So I'm going to do com control and enter, then edit stroke. Okay, I'm going to have a box that draws inside that grid that I just laid out. Now if I select these pixels, can control C and then control shift V, now I'm going to transform this into the position of the other cubes. Control V again. in the right position control V again I'm going to move this down here control V move this into place and then control V the final one so now I have the sides of my cube all in place the last thing I would do is I'd add a new layer above it minimize my bottom layer a uh, new layer below it as well. So I'm going to do a black background. So I've got my cube faces. And then something as simple as doing one, two, three, four, 
five, six. So this isn't properly related into the faces, it's just a way for me to be able to tell what faces what. Uh, I would then file save as a desktop, let's go to desktop and then do new folder, camshnap tutorial. In here, I'm going to save this as a JPEG. That is my texture coordinates. So this shows me where to put images on top of our final product. So now I can close that. that and in here all I want to do as my final thing is I want to go back to selection mode and then file export and I want to export this as an FBX or an OBJ so it transforms the UV coordinates with it desktop uh, what do I call it cam snap tutorial and let's do cube Save. Okay. So now, if I have a look at my desktop camera snap tutorial, I have a cube and I have a texture coordinate. And now we can open Touch Designer. And the first thing I'm going to do is inside Touch Designer. My mouse isn't working too well on the surface I've got here. I am going to literally drag and drop these two in to my scene. So first thing I have is a cube and the next thing I have is my texture. I'm going to go inside cube and delete everything apart from the cube itself. And in here we want to copy, lock in that mesh and then cut and paste the cube onto our top level. Now if I apply this texture as the material, let's give it a constant. You can see that because we have kept the UVs consistent, as in we use the texture coordinates from 3ds Max, the one we exported, we have a model that is consistent with uh, our image. So our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 appear on the individual sides of the cube separated properly. Uh, if you've made it to this stage successfully, it means that we can move on and actually integrate CamSnapper. Uh, I'm going to find... So I'm going to create a, a normal render scene. So I'm going to introduce a camera. I'm going to introduce a light. Even because I've got a constant, I won't actually need it. And then I'm going to introduce the render top. So in here, that is perfect. What I want to do now is I want to go to my dialogues. Uh, tools and then cam snapper drag and drop that in and we will be presented with this camera container in the camera container I want to give it my render top and I also want to give it my so I'm going to open the parameters for this I want to give it my cubes geo so it needs the actual SOP here so it needs the original geometry not the the created world geometry and out here I can open my cam snapper window and I can open <coughs> open output which as you can see in the camera updates the screen so it shows the alternate monitor. Now the first thing I want to do inside cam snapper is we are going to rotate this 3D model so that it's a, a, a almost physical representation of the model we want to project onto. So in this case I am going to give it the texture, our texture, and then I'm going to make sure I can see it slightly so it's got a slight alpha. And the first thing you can see is it's back to front and upside down. So I'm going to hold the control key and navigate this like a normal 3D model. So let's see we want, there we go, so we have four and six facing us and two is on the top, I think that's two at least. Uh, at around that angle there. That's what the geometry is. So now I can un unhold control and start picking points. And as I click points, you will see they appear in my projected window. 
Now, a good number is around between 6 and 10 points to work with. So I'm, because I've got the cube, I'm going to use a simple cube. I'm going to activate all the, the key vertex on the cube. Now, with a point selected, you can see in my main window it turns yellow instead of blue, and it changes which one is selected inside the cam snapper projected window. What we want to do is move these points, so I'm going to select it, and I'm going to move my mouse over to the projector and drag and drop it into the relative position on the 3D model. Now, as you do this, depending on how complex your model is, it won't start realizing the model, and by realizing I mean showing it in the projected space, until it's able to calculate all the points. So you can see here, as I move some, it starts to lose the ability to render the shape, just because it's, it's going to like physical intolerances that it's not willing to hold. But as we start to move them out, you can see here I'm just selecting a point and moving it to the point of where it belongs in the 3D model in real space. It will start to fill in more and more accurately to our space. And there we go, just like that, a cube starts to become a real cube in space. You can go back and tidy up the points more. If I select one and then use my arrow keys, I can nudge it slightly in space so you can get a real perfect edge. And one thing that I'm watching for here is that... Oh, I think I just deleted a point. Yeah, I did, I reset at this point. So one thing I'm watching for is so that it doesn't bleed too much onto the rear of the screen. So I'm specifically going and I'm moving 2 down, or 0.3 down. I'm going to move 0.2 out and up a bit so it maps properly. I'm going to, I can't actually see the far edge, but 5 I definitely know needs to come up slightly. And you can push or hold to move at different rates. Uh, my cube is hollow in the bottom, so the, the base of 4 and 6 warps slightly, but it, it's enough now for us to get going. So as you can see, I have a 3D representation in CamSnapper and an almost exact representation in real life, but it's covered in a bunch of guidelines and stuff. You can turn off your guides and you can turn up your texture alpha to get a much better view of what you're looking at, but this isn't still final. I'm going to close my CamSnapper window and I'm going to close my output. And I'm going to make a second render top. And with this render top, instead of using camera, I'm going to reference CamSnapper. And suddenly it's going to put everything into the correct place for us, or it should at least. Oh, I need to, I think I may have made an error here because my geometry is translated. There we go, sorry. It's uh, make sure that you have no or, uh, geometry orientation on your actual main input geometry because that in turn will affect the output. So that occurred because my geometry inside 3ds Max was rotated, but you need to unrotate it in Touch Designer and do the cam snapper rotation we talked about. So everything will still look the exact same, it just means my cam snapper output is going to be correct. Now I have my second render top. I would pass this to a window, make that window uh, fill a location on my second monitor. And now if I open this uh, without borders and always on top, you can see we get a perfect non-guideline based version of the CamSnapper view. Uh, now you would edit your texture, so you would alter the UV that is controlling everything. So I would do, let's say, add something like movie file in. Let's do it in the taste of touch designer. Eh? Transform. Oh. Obviously the first time I've used that node. Uh, I am going to do fit instead. Now I, w I know I need to fit it to a square resolution so a thousand by a thousand keep the nice quality and instead of fit best I'm going to do fit, fit horizon. I'm going to give it a constant or actually no, let's do a ramp. I'm going to give it a ramp background that is radial. And let's animate the phase, so abs time dot seconds. Composite. 
you'll you'll see what I'm doing in a second. Don't worry. So I'm gonna composite one on top of each other uh, atop. So now I have my banana on top of my perfect square. I composite. I'm going to add a null here and adjust that to my texture. So now I can put things in the chain. So I go my original texture to my new banana texture. And instead of multiply, I'm going to do a top. And in transform, I am going to input layer 2 as my fixed input. If I start scaling this down, we should see it goes back to being normal. Uh, 4, which is currently under my banana, is... If I reverse it, you can see 4 is in the middle there. I'm just going to, this is super rough, but you can see the idea we're doing. I'm going to scale my banana square to fit perfectly that UV that we're looking at. Yeah, I need to make it a bit taller. And there we go. So that, it's not perfect, but it's fitting. Now I plug this into the null instead. And you can see on our video that we now have a banana and a curve projected onto the right hand side of our cube you could uh, you can explore with 3d yourself but if you captured a 3d scene into a cube map render you could then work out how to reorientate that 3d scene back onto the cube itself uh, but hopefully this is a good explanation or, or a quick introduction to cam snapper it's something i couldn't find a proper tutorial for online so i thought solve it myself